As you know, there is a huge battle going on in quantum. It's early, right? Some people say it's going to, you know, it's going to hit impact in five years. Some people say 10, some people say 20. All I know is there's a ton of investment going into, the, into this and IBM is making some really big moves. They had a huge announcement at their quantum uh, summit, which was pretty exciting. So I would say the, the highlight here is uh, IBM rolled out a 127 qubit quantum computer and it is the first quantum computer with more than 100 high quality qubits. And as you know, it's not just about the number of qubits, it's about the quality of it. Um, and uh, by the way, we're, we're doing a lot of research on this. Uh, Paul, our principal analyst of, of, of quantum and space, we're still getting underneath this. So uh, I'm gonna try not to make too many uh, claims here, but 127 qubits does put it beyond reach of today's classical computers ability to simulate that and we did see that uh, i believe they were doing a fusion uh, ion or maybe it was a lithium ion simulation where uh, running it on quantum took seven minutes and i think running it on conventional took about seven years i thought that was uh I thought that was uh pretty pretty cool uh the the other thing that ibm did is they rolled out a new measurement uh, which added this uh, idea of um, speed, okay? Scale, quality, and speed, which, by the way, uh, at the outset, looks very rational. I, I get that, particularly the new speed, but I really wish they hadn't rolled this out with, <laughs> within 18 months of rolling out quantum volume, right? Because if you remember, uh, first it was all about qubits, and then it was all about quantum volume. And now, at least according to IBM, and it's it's hard to disagree with them, uh, is adding this idea of, of speed, and that's gate, gate speed. So um, pretty good stuff. Uh, we're doing a lot more research on this to take to see if we can take bigger shots at it. But I think the big picture is uh, IBM is moving up and to the right increasing capabilities. Uh, IBM happens to have um, one of the bigger development communities out there, and they have more logos associated with their quantum name than any other company uh, right now. Yeah, it was a, it was a impressive announcement. The company is basically on a trajectory of announcing a new uh, processor uh, almost on an annual basis. They had the Falcon in 20, I believe it was 19, they had the Hummingbird in 2020, and uh, now this is the Eagle processor. Uh, of course, for those of you that kind of follow the basics of quantum, IBM builds on a superconducting platform as opposed to a lot of what we talk about ion trapping. Often when we talk about, say, Honeywell or say ion Q, we talk about ion trapping, which seem to be the two most popular methods right now for, for building out um, quantum. This, this increased number um, really is all about being able to drive and accelerate applications that we are familiar with but haven't become overly familiar with in a quantum um, format, such as machine learning, um, modeling molecules uh, for, for, you know, drug compounds and cre in, uh, drug uh, compound creation. Uh, so we're seeing that happen very quickly. Um, you know, I thought overall, Pat, that this was a important announcement that because of the academic and importance of research and that showing that the company is continuing to move forward when you are hearing so many announcements from the entire field of quantum about advancements. I also do like, you know, hearing more about the practical relationship that's going to take place between quantum and classical. Right. Uh, while you did mention specifically that this is an example where quantum will outperform, we've all come to a relatively strong consensus that the optimized uh, outputs will come when classical and quantum computing are working harmoniously so that quantum is working on solving the problems it's most um, well designed to solve and concurrently um, you know, on the other side, the uh, classical computing continues to do what it's most well designed to do. So this was a pretty strong announcement. And Pat, by the way, you and I will be doing a series of 6.5 videos with the IBM team around the Quantum Summit.
to deep to dive deeper into IBM's advancements, uh, customer examples, and then a little bit further into research uh, in the academic side, which I think are the three major components that are being worked on from IBM. An important set of announcements as we continue forward over the next decade of quantum advancement. 